that and here we go. Okay, so guys, as advertised, nothing new coming at you today. All I'm going to do for the entire day, so just get ready for this because you're going to be giving a lot back to me. All I'm going to do is ask you questions. Nothing new, all these questions you already know the answers to. And as you answer these questions, it is going to allow you to flesh this paper out. As this paper starts to come together, you're going to start to have these moments where you're like, I remember that from the video. I remember that from here. I remember that. And all of a sudden, guys, this is all going to come together. And at this one magic moment, you're all going to feel this, this real deep need to turn your head that way and look at that wall because you're going to go, good night. That's what this is because that's what this is. And then, guys, we're going to pause for a second. We're going to talk about the extra credit because there's an opportunity for extra credit today. And then, guys, we're going to take all of this information and we're going to then reorganize it in a way that probably never occurred to you. And you're going to have this vision into like the next three or four weeks of this class because, guys, all of this is not only really interesting, it's foundational to what we're going to do between now and Christmas. Christmas. So with that said, gang, what I need to do is first of all, make sure you all got your periodic tables. You all got the notes from last time and you all got this class notes page I gave you. You're good. Okay. So guys, here we go. What we need to do then grabbing your class notes paper, literally grab it and get it in front of you. Where is all the important information on that page? I already shared this with you last time. What are we going to focus on top or bottom? the bottom, the outline. So guys, grab a pen or a pencil or something you can write with. And what I want you to do is I want you to circle the important things in that outline so that your eye can fall to them quickly. So the first is this, guys. The principal quantum number tells us size. Circle the word size. Now, when we talk about the principal quantum number, which tells us size, you may remember that the, the values on the periodic table go one to seven. Circle that. Circle one to seven, because it's going to be important that you remember that the values friend go one to seven. Then guys, the other thing that you need to circle is two n squared because the 2n squared rule gives us the capacity of the energy levels. Now guys, go down to sublevel. Circle the word shape. The sublevel number tells us the shape. Now, how many sublevels can be in an energy level? Circle the letter n because N tells us the number of sublevels in an energy level. And then what are the four types of sublevels? They are S and P and D and F and circle those as well. Now moving down to orbitals. Do not circle the word orientation. We will talk more about that in a minute. What you do need to do is circle two electrons because two electrons can go in an orbital. And then finally, guys, going down to the spin number, please remember that the two electrons that are in, in an orbital have opposite spins, so circle the word up and circle the word down. Now you have focused in front of you all the information that you need to be wildly successful with what we're going to do today. You guys all caught up with me with circling? Okay, so take that sheet, slide it to the side to keep it within, within your peripheral vision because you need it. And now guys, bring to the forefront your notes page. You guys are going to be feeling like car dealers in Vegas by the time this is over. So guys, bring that other sheet of paper up in front of you and now, guys, there's one little concept that I need to teach you. So, guys, first thing we need to do is we need to label our little ditty here to make sure that we're all clear. So, guys, using your notes that you just circled as your reference, what is N? The energy level number, and what does it tell us? Size. Write it down. 
So right next to that, energy level, N is energy level, and it tells us size. Now, what does the L value tell us? L is, it's right there in your notes, sublevel, which is shape. And then, guys, what is M? The orbital number, which tells us, now we are going to write it down, orientation. Okay, so now we've got this piece of paper labeled. We're just about ready to start fiddling around with it. But guys, here's the thing. You need kind of the 30,000 foot view. So when you look at this literally or figuratively from a distance, what is it that you're looking at? Well, guys, I would suspect that most of you have done this because being in Utah County, we sort of like to garden and we have orchard trees and things like that. Guys, are you familiar with the concept of a core sample? Do you know what that's all about? Let me share this with you. So, guys, when you look at this paper that you have in front of you, what you're actually looking at is a core sample of an atom. So, what's the deal? Have you guys always used an apple core? Not an apple peeler, but an apple corer? Do you know? So, if you're not familiar, it is a, it's a cylinder of metal, about that big around. And at the end, it's literally a tube. And at the end of it, there are teeth. And then at the other end, there's a handle. Sound familiar? And you grab the handle and you grab the apple and you, all right, forgive the finger, but you use, if this is the apple and then this is the stem, you shove this over the stem and then you drive it down into the apple and you, you, and the teeth dig in and when you pull it back out, what's inside the thing? The core of, all right, you have no idea what I'm talking about. So guys, it goes like this. Here's an apple. And this is our apple corer. -er. But instead of going all the way through, let's just say we go to the middle. Okay, so I'm not going all the way out the tail end of the apple, the flower end of the apple. But if we stop right here and then we pull this out, what do we have? Well, we have a core sample of the apple. So what is in the very middle of the apple? The seeds. That would be like the nucleus. Then, guys, what do we have up here? Well, we have the flesh of the apple, and then we have the stem, and then we have the skin. And by taking a core sample, we can kind of look into the apple and see the way the layers stack up. See what I'm saying? Well, guys, similarly, we can do this with atoms. And this was the best I could do. Remember, this is not the Bohr model. These are not orbits. These are meant to be clouds. So I tried to make them sort of wispy in the background. You can see the, the cloudy shadow. So, so guys, we've got one cloud here, and then we've got another cloud. That's getting better. And then we've got another cloud, and we've got cloud inside of cloud inside of cloud. And if we take a core sample of this, and then if we identify the boundaries, the outer limits of these clouds, do you see the connection with this paper? So guys, that is, that is, that are, these are, that are, whatever. That is these lines. So down here is the nucleus, and then these lines are the boundaries of the clouds around the nucleus. So you could even think of it like this, forgiving what a horrible artist I am. But what you're kind of looking at then is something like, like here's a cloud and there's a cloud and there's a cloud and there's a cloud and these are the boundaries of the clouds. Do you see what we're saying? So then it's like a core sample. Huh? You get the idea? Okay. So guys, with that said, here comes a stream of questions. Guys, again, now that you understand core sample, I'm done teaching you stuff. Everything else that we are going to do today is all based on recall of what you learned last time. You ready? So first of all this, if these lines represent the energy level in an atom, look at your energy level notes, how many lines should there be? One, two, 
seven. But we're only going to do the first four because going to seven would just clog up the screen. So guys, we're going to number them one. Oops. Oh, now I'm drawing dots. Hold on. Uh, bump and bump. So we're going to number them one, two, three, and four. Do that with me. Now, if you'd like, and it's maybe not a bad idea, you could then go dot, dot, dot up to seven, understanding that this should go up to seven. It's just that we're not going to do that today. All right. Wow. Okay. So guys, you're under, and please, if you need to ask questions, stop me. So you're good with the, the rungs being the levels. One through seven, we're just going to four. Now guys, do this. On these lines, we are now going to write down how many electrons, Josh, are in those. Oh, are you okay? Do you need something? What do you need? Come on. Pen or pencil? Okay. So guys, what we're going to do now is on these lines, we're going to write down how many electrons go in these levels. How do we know how many electrons? 2n squared rule. So how many electrons go in the first energy level? 2. How many electrons go in the second energy level? 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. The third energy level, 3 squared is 9. Double that is 18. And then the fourth energy level, 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32. Again, guys, I've taught you nothing. We're just organizing what you already know. You guys good to there? Okay, now guys, in your class notes page, we are now done with energy level. Go down to sublevel. How many sublevels are in an energy level? N, right? Number of sublevels in an energy level is N. And what are the four sublevels? S, P, D, and F. So guys, let's make sure you're clear. First energy level has how many sublevels? One, it's an S. Second energy level has two S and P. Do you remember the pattern? Okay. So guys, here's what we're going to do. We are now going to go down here to the first energy level. I know it's low on the screen. We'll be done down here quickly. Draw an arrow. Now we are moving as the arrow indicates over to the sub levels. Now, guys, let's make sure you're clear. Again, questions. How many sublevels in the first energy level? One, and what is it? S. So we are going to draw a line underneath sublevel, and that line is going to represent our sublevel. Why is there only one line? Because there's only one sublevel in the first energy level. And what kind of sublevel is that? S, P, D, or F? It is an S. And we are going to label it not just S, but one S because it's the S sublevel in the first energy level. Now, guys, a little bit of logic. You ready? Follow this thought. So I live in a part of Linden where they are building new houses. And before they build a house, here's what they do. They carve out the neighborhood. They come in and they knock down the orchard, they level the orchard, and then they say, this is gonna be a neighborhood and they name it, whatever they name it, Fox Hollow or something cute. And uh, so they, they lay out the neighborhood. And then what do they do next? They build streets. And then what do they do next? They cut the street into lots, and then what do they do? They start building houses. You get the idea? Now follow the logic. If you have a neighborhood, and that neighborhood has two houses in it, you following? A brand new neighborhood with only two houses. But imagine that that neighborhood only has one street. How many houses have got to be on that street? Let's do it again. Brand new neighborhood with only two houses. In this brand new neighborhood, there's only one street. So how many houses have got to be on that street? Two. There's nowhere else for them to be because there's only one street and we've got to put the houses on a street, right? Do you understand the logic? Apply that to this. Guys, how many electrons are in the energy level? Two. How many sublevels are there? One. So guys, if this energy level only contains one sublevel, 
And if there are two electrons in the energy level, how many have got to be in the sublevel if there's nowhere else for them to go? of them. So guys, in that sublevel, there are two electrons. There's nowhere else for them to be because the first energy level only has one sublevel. If that seems weird to you, it'll make more sense when we do energy level two. Now, we are going to move to orbitals. Guys, look at your notes on orbitals. How many electrons go in an orbital? Two. So watch. So guys, if two electrons can go in an orbital, and if we need room for two electrons, how many orbitals do we need to hold two electrons? Just one. So guys, what we're saying then is this first energy level has one sublevel and it's an S. And because that one S has two electrons, we only need one orbital to hold those two electrons. And sure enough, guys, the 1s sublevel only has one orbital, and it looks like this. So underneath orbital, guys, you want to draw this. This is what the 1s orbital looks like. Now, guys, what does it mean that there are three axes, up and down, left and right, and then diagonal? three-dimensional. So you are not drawing a bunch of dots in a circle. What are you actually drawing? A bunch of dots in a sphere. Go ahead and draw the dots. Guys, this is what the 1s orbital looks like. It is a sphere in the middle of it where the axis crosses the nucleus. And what do all those dots represent? They all represent two electrons moving randomly around the nucleus seeming to occupy that large solid volume that we call an electron cloud or an orbital which is just like the fan blades that almost cut off my finger last time because they're behaving like a solid even though it's actually just electrons moving around in space. All right, so guys, I'm going to zoom back out. All right, we got another 20 seconds of dot drawing. 20 seconds seems like a really long time when you actually time 20 seconds. So guys, as you're finishing drawing dots, let me sort of whisper in your ear, because some of you right now are feeling like you're just getting beaten up by me. All he's doing is firing questions at us. And this, uh, uh, guys, I, I approach the beginning of this like that, because what I find is that people tend to panic when we get in the middle of this. And if I can just force you to march through it, you get through this first energy level. And whether you understand it or not, at least you've done it. But guys, many of you right now are going like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm not really completely sure what we've done. So guys, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the second energy level and we're going to do the exact same progression of thinking that we did in the first. But I think what you're going to find is if things seem a little bit like blurry right now, you're going to find that this is going to come into better contrast. You're going to just watch, do the second energy level with me and this will start to come together. So guys, how do we know that there's eight electrons in the second energy level? 2n squared rule, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do, and join me right here, right in this area, we're going to draw another arrow. Now, second energy level, how many sublevels? Two, right? And what are they? S and P. See, these are things that you know. But guys, watch how we're going to do this. We let one line represent the S, we're going to let two lines represent the S and the P. But guys, before you draw them, notice where they are. The bottom line is below the arrow and the top line is above the arrow. And now what we're going to do is we are going to label these S and P. So the bottom one is the S. But now it's the S in the second energy level, so we're going to call it the 2S. And now the top one is the P in the second energy level, so we're going to call it the 2P. 
Okay, so now watch how this all starts to fit together. Guys, how many electrons were down here in the 1s? Two. Why were there two? There had to be. There was nowhere else for them to go. But guys, it turns out that it's not just this S that contains two. All S's contain two. So we're going to put a two right there because all S sublevels contain two electrons. Now a little logic question for you. If there are two electrons in the S, how many have got to be in the P? How do you know that it's six? because it's got to add up to eight, and if two of them are there, the other six have got to be there. Okay, now guys, let's go over to orbitals. How many electrons, is, or I'm sorry, how many orbitals does it take to house two electrons? One, how many orbitals will it take to house six electrons? Three, so let's look at what they look like. Guys, the one orbital that it takes to house these two electrons, because it's an s orbital, is also a sphere. Go ahead and write it. The difference is that it's bigger. So the 2s is physically bigger than the 1s. The letter s tells us that it is a sphere, and the 2 tells us that it's bigger than the 1s. So guys, what you might want to do then, what if we just do this? Instead of drawing all the dots, what if you just do this and you understand what we're talking about, right? It's just a bigger sphere. So now guys, and this is interesting. Remember what you said. How many p orbitals would we expect there to be to house six electrons? How many p orbitals does there need to be to hold six electrons? three. But guys, guess what? They are not spheres. What shapes are they? The figure eights. Guys, these are them. There's one p orbital that goes up and down, one p orbital that goes left and right, and one p orbital that goes in and out of the board. So guys, go ahead and draw those in your notes. But understand what you're drawing is one that goes up and down, one that goes left and right, and one that goes in and out. So they actually orient themselves 90 degrees to each other. And you may even want to write that down. Because over here, you may want to scratch that into your notes, that these orient 90 degrees to each other. But guys, why would they do that? Why would these p orbitals go 90 degrees to each other and not just overlap like this? If each one of these pencils represents one of those dumbbell shapes, why don't they just do this? Why do they go 90 degrees to each other? What's in these, what's in these spaces? What's in these dumbbells, these figure eights? Electrons, and what do electrons do to each other? They repel. So why do they, and this is in your homework, you may want to scratch this down. Why do they go 90 degrees to each other? They do this because they repel each other. How do you spell repel? Like that? Yeah. They repel each other, guys, because they're all, they're all negatively charged. So guys, let's review what we just said. Let's let this sink in. If you, have to, if you have questions asked, please do it. So here's what we know. The first two electrons around the nucleus of an atom go in the 1s orbital. That 1s orbital is a small sphere. The next two electrons around the nucleus go in a larger sphere that we call the 2s. And then the next six electrons go in these dumbbell-shaped spaces that we call the 2p. Now, guys, the thing that we haven't talked about yet, let me clean this off. The thing that we haven't talked about yet is this. What is in the middle of this? The nucleus. What's in the middle of this? The nucleus. And in the middle of all of these is the nucleus. And guys, it's the same nucleus. We've spread these out so you can see them. 
but what would it look if what would it look like if we brought all five of these together around the same nucleus what would that look like well it look like this right but guys for this it would actually look one two three four five ten electrons it would actually look like this this is what it looks like when we bring all of that together around the same nucleus and those 10 electrons, five orbitals, I give you neon. Guys, from what you just learned, you now know what neon looks like. So help me pull this together. Guys, tell me what this is right there that I just circled in white. What is that? The 1s orbital. So talk to me about what this is the 2s orbital, and then what's this? One of the two p's, and what's this? Another 2p, and what's that? The third 2p, and when these things have electrons in them, we have one, two electrons there, three, four, then five, six, ah. <laughs> I hate it when it does that. I wish I knew why it does that, but I don't. Hold on. I'm going to restart and go like this, and then go like this, and then go here, and then go there, and then there. Okay, so guys, we've got one, and then two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and then eight, and nine, and then 10. And that is what the 10 electrons look like that organize themselves around a neon atom. Guys, that is neon. Isn't that crazy? That's physically what a neon atom looks like. You've got the 1s, which is a small sphere. You've got the 2s, which is a bigger sphere. And then the 2ps, which are these dumbbell shapes that are about the same size as the 2s. And they all organize themselves like this. And this is neon. Pretty cool. Questions about any of this? Are we ready to do the third energy level? Should we do energy level three? Okay. Now, guys, watch really carefully. Look back at your notes page and then look as I go back to the notes page and tell me what's different. What changed? What's different? Yeah, the boxes are, or the, the drawings are gone and we replace them with boxes. Guys, this is the deal. You are not going to be drawing the orbitals. We understand that this is a sphere and that this is a sphere and that this is a dumbbell and that's a dumbbell and that's a dumbbell. But instead of drawing them as dumbbells and spheres, we're just gonna draw boxes. And what do the arrows then represent? The electrons. And what does it tell you that they're pointing in opposite directions? Opposite spins, one is north pole up and the other's north pole down. So guys, don't worry about drawing that right now. Let's go on to energy level three. So guys, looking now at energy level three, how many sublevels in energy level three? Three, S, P, and D. Watch how we do them, ready? We go boom, 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 but notice that this line is below the arrow, this line is slightly above the arrow, and then guys, this is important, this top line is right below the fourth energy level. So now, guys, we're, gonna, we're going to label them. We've got the 3s, we've got the 3p, and we've got the 3d. Now, guys, the pattern just keeps repeating itself. How many electrons are in the 3s? Two. How many are in the 3p? Six. How many have got to then be in the 3d? 10, right? 18 minus 6 minus 2 gives us 10. Now, guys, watch. How many orbitals does it take? How many orbitals will there be in the 3s? One. And what will its shape be? An even bigger sphere. Draw a box. What will the three p orbitals look like? Even bigger dumbbells or figure eights. Draw three boxes. 
And by the way, guys, can I show you a trick on how to do this faster? Do this. Draw a rectangle and then draw two lines to break it up and then draw check marks. It's so much faster. You're going to be drawing so many arrows in the next 72 hours that you're going to want to die. You need to figure out how to do this quickly. Okay, guys, so what about this? We know that this is a sphere. We know that this is the three dumbbells. So, guys, given the trend, how many d orbitals should there be? 10 divided by 2 is 5. And guess what, guys? Sure enough, and they look like this. Please don't draw them. They look like clover leaves, except for this one that kind of looks like a weird distorted snowman. But, guys, there are in fact 5d orbitals, and these are the spaces that these two electrons appear to occupy as solids as they organize themselves around the nucleus. But again, you don't need to know the shapes of these. We are just going to draw boxes. So go ahead and draw the five boxes like so. Okay, so now guys, fourth energy level. This is about to get wacky. Ready? Fourth energy level has how many sublevels? Four. What are they? S and P and D and F. But guys, watch. We're going to draw the arrow. Go ahead and draw your arrow right there. And then check this out. Oh boy. Guys, look where the bottom line is from the fourth energy level. It is underneath the 3D. It is between the 3P and the 3D. So when we label these, they go 4S, 4P, 4D, and 4F. They overlap. But guys, we can play the same game. You ready? How many electrons are going to be in the 4S? 2, 4P, 6, 4D, 10. 4F, quick math, 32 minus 10 minus 6 minus 2, 14. Isn't it amazing how this just keeps repeating itself in this orderly pattern? Kind of makes me wonder if it's an accident. Okay, so guys, what is the 4S orbital going to look like? A gold sphere. Draw a box. What is the 4P going to look like? Three big old dumbbells. Draw three boxes. What is the 4D going to look like? Five, well, four big old clover leaves and then the snowman thing. Draw five boxes. So now, guys, you're still drawing. <clears throat> what is the 4F going to look like? Well, guys, first of all, how many 4F orbitals do there have to be to house 14 electrons? Seven. And guess what, guys? Just as predicted, there are seven of them, and they look like this. These are the seven F orbitals. Each one of those represents the spaces that two electrons occupy, behaving as if they're a solid as they move around the nucleus. I just love that there's seven of them. This simple little game that we're playing predicts that there should be seven. And sure enough, there are seven of them, just like we predicted. But what are we going to do with them instead of drawing them like this? We're going to draw boxes. So let's draw them in. Okay, so guys, extra credit time. You ready? This is your opportunity for extra credit. This is due Friday, the day of the test. 
here's your chance for extra credit. Take this diagram in order. Watch, guys, in order from bottom to top. 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, and then the d's and f's here. And rather than draw these as boxes, draw what these orbitals actually look like to scale in the same way that we drew this, where we've got the 1s is a sphere, and then the 2s is a bigger sphere, and then the 2p's is dumbbells that are the same size as the 2s. Do that all the way out to the top in a fashion that maybe looks something like this. But guys, here's the deal. I would encourage you to think outside the box. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in this class. Guys, this is what one of my students did with this a couple years ago. This, this is brilliant. She said, here's the one S. And she drew the axes and the dots. And then she said, here's the two S. I think, yeah, she even labeled it two S. And when you stack the one S on the two S, you start to see how they overlap. And then she went, okay, here's the two P's. Same size as the two S, only they look different. And you stack those on there and you start to see that. And then what's next? Well, that would be the three S. And she drew that again, same axis, only bigger. And then the three P and there's how she represented the three P. And you start to look down into this from the front and all of a sudden you see that complexity, which is a way cooler representation than I would suggest any of this was. This was Jasmine Price, if any of you know her. But um, this is cool. So guys, understand what we are asked, what I'm asking you to do for extra credit is represent all the shapes and sizes of these orbitals all the way through the ladder that you see in front of you, including the 4F. But guys, understand it doesn't have to be a drawing like that. You can represent it like this. I've had people that have actually done it in like PowerPoint. They've done digital representations of these and then stacked them all together. However you want to do it, you can do it as a PowerPoint presentation where you could make them stack up. Um, but in the end, we want a representation of what these orbitals look like stacked together through the 4F. F. Do you understand the assignment if you want to do it? And guys, again, it's extra credit. You don't have to do it, um, but we'll turn them in the day of the test. You good? Okay. Questions about? You're all right. Okay. So guys, with that said, here's the deal. Whether you choose to do this or not, here's what you need to be able to do. You need to know the order that these things stack. So guys, with the notes page in front of you, start at the bottom with me. We now have a progression that these things stack in. It goes 1s, then 2s, then 2p, then 3s, then 3p, then 4s, then 3d, then 4p, and it just keeps going. And guys, you need to know that order from inside out, from bottom to top. You need to know 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, but it doesn't just stop there. It continues on and it goes 5s, 4d, 5p, and then it goes 6s, 5d, 4f, 6p, then it goes 7s, 6d, 5f, 7p. And you need to know that from top to bottom. You've got to know that because that's the way the electrons orient themselves from middle to the outside. So, any of you interested in memorizing that? I didn't think so. But guys, here's the deal. I would propose to you that you don't, you need to know this, but you don't have to memorize this. Because guys, here's the crazy thing. This order, 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, every single one of you already knew this. You already knew 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, all the way out. You already knew this before you came into class. Every single one of you. How is it that I knew that every single one of you knew this order? Say it again, Ammon. Yeah, but I mean, that sounds like Morse code. How did you know? How can I guarantee you that this is not new to any of you and you've all seen this before? Where have you seen this before, guys? It's 
kind of your notes last time, but not quite. Where have you seen this before? Guys, it's right here. It's your periodic tables. That, grab your periodic tables. That order, 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, that is the structure of the periodic table. That's the way the periodic table is put together. Now let me help you see it. You guys ready? Join me over here. Guys, this should not stop at 1 to 4. What should it go up to? 1 to 7. But guys, have you ever noticed that on your periodic tables, there are actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 horizontal rows on your periodic table? Guys, the reason is because each horizontal row on your periodic table is an energy level. So go through literally with a pen or pencil and label them. Guys, the horizontal rows on your periodic table are the energy levels. So just go through and label them, guys, 1 to 7. Now, if the horizontal rows are the energy levels, what are the energy levels broken into? Sublevels, S, P, D, and F. Now, guys, how many electrons, how many electrons go, 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 how many electrons go in an S sublevel? Two. But guys, look, there is a section of your periodic table that is one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, boxes wide. These two columns are the S sublevel. Label them as such. And then, guys, just like I did on mine, move helium over and make it a neighbor of hydrogen. Now we found the S sublevel. What's the next sublevel? S, then what? P. How many electrons are in the P sublevel? Six. Well, guys, look. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the P sublevel. Label it as such. Now, guys, after the P's, we have the D's. How many electrons go in the D? 10. And look, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. This saddle on the periodic table is the D sublevel. But guys, please label it D and then in parentheses minus 1. You'll see why in a minute. Now, which sublevel are we missing? S, P, D, F. How many electrons are in the F sublevel? 14. You want to make any guesses about how wide this part of the periodic table is? It's 14. Label it F and then go F minus 2. So guys, now that you have your periodic tables labeled, I would propose to you that you can now figure out the order that goes like this. You can now go 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, and on up all the way through all of the levels. But in order to do that, you've got to be able to do two things. You've got to be able to count, and you've got to be able to play Battleship. Have any ever played the game Battleship? You've got the grid, you put your little battleships on there and your little brother goes 7G. And you look at 7G and your battleship's right on that site and you lie to him and tell him it's not there and then you move, you know the game I'm talking, okay. So guys, battleship, so this is like battleship, right? Please don't write this down, but watch. Guys, you need to know how to read a grid. So tell me what that point is right there, number first. 3B, what's this? 3D, what's this? 2C, what's this? 4B, what's this? 4C, what's this? 3B, what's this? 2B, what's this? 1A, what's this? Oh, guys, come on. What's this? 2B, what's this? 1B, what's this? 1A, what's this? 1S, what's this? 2S, what's this? 2P, right, guys, it's just like Battleship. 2P, what's this? 3S, what's this? 3P, what's this? Oh, you're getting it, what's this? 
One S, what's this? Two S, what's this? Two P, what's this? Three S, what's this? Three P, what's this? Four S, what's this? Be careful. D minus one, four minus, three D, what's this? Four P, guess what you just said out loud? You just said one S, two S, two P, three S, three P, four S, three D, four P. Guys, if you can count, and most of you can, and if you can play Battleship, now you know this. Where are electrons 1 and 2? 1s. Where are electrons 3 and 4? 2s. Where are electrons 5 through 10? 2p. Where are electrons 11 and 12? 3s. Where are electrons 13 through 18? 3p and so on. And guys, by following that pattern, you now know this order from bottom to top. So now the question is this, what are we going to do with it? Take your notes page, flip them over. Guys, we are going to do what are called orbital filling diagrams. This is where the rubber hits the road. We are first of all going to do oxygen. So write down oxygen and write down the number eight. And we're just going to use the back of our page to do this. So guys, do this. Find oxygen on your periodic table and tell yourself which sublevel it's in. Not everybody, just yourself. So guys, which sublevel is oxygen in? Right here, where is that? 2p. I'm scared that you don't seem to know. Guys, oxygen is 2p. You good? Okay. Now, how many electrons make up an oxygen atom? Eight. But guys, we can't put eight electrons in the 2p. Where do the first two electrons go? 1s. So write it down. Now, where do electrons three and four go. Two S. Write it down. Now, where do electrons five, six, seven, and eight go? Two P. Write it down. Now, guys, we need to think about orbitals. Talk to me about the 1S orbital. What does it look like? An itty little sphere, right? We're going to draw a box. Tell me what the 2s orbital looks like. A bigger sphere. We are going to draw a box. What do the 3p orbitals look like? Dumbbells. We are going to draw three boxes. Now, guys, we need to place eight electrons. Electron number one goes there. And guys, now, please don't write this down, but I need to show you a rule. Here's a sublevel, and here's a sublevel. We've got three sublevels, right? There's a rule in atoms that says you always fill a sublevel before you go on. So here's what that means. Electron number two goes there. It fills the sublevel, the 1s, before we go on. Now electron three goes there. Where does electron four go? paired up with it. Now guys, there's another rule with electrons that says within a sublevel, they spread out as much as they can. So electron five goes there. Where is electron six going to go? Unpaired. Now that we have more than one orbital in the P, they will unpair as much as they can. So that's electron six. There's electron seven. Now, where does electron eight have to go? Paired up, but spinning down. And that is the orbital filling diagram for oxygen. So now you're saying to yourself, good night. I'm not exactly sure if I understand that. I'm really not even sure how I learned any of this, but why on stinking earth do I need to know this stuff? Guys, watch. Please don't write this down. This has been so much fun for us that let's do a couple more. Just me. You can just watch. So we're going to do hydrogen. Where is hydrogen? 
Where is this? 1s, how many electrons does it have? One, so please don't do this. I'm gonna go hydrogen, 1s, there's my box. And that was so much fun, I'm gonna do it again. Now I'm all done. So guys, some of you already see it. Here's the deal. See this electron right here that's all by itself? See that electron right there that's all by itself? They don't want to be all by themselves. So what hydrogen does is it comes over here and it sticks its 1s electron into the 2p of oxygen. And those orbitals overlap and it forms a bond. But guess what? Oxygen's got another spot. So another hydrogen atom comes over and sticks its 1s electron into that 2p of oxygen. And what did we just make? Water. See, guys, that's why we're doing this. Because in the next unit, you're going to find out that these orbital diagrams, these orbital structures, lock together like puzzle pieces to build molecules. And molecules are the foundation of everything we're going to talk about for the rest of the year. And every single molecular structure, from sugars to carbohydrates to fats to DNA, you name it, they can all be mapped back to the electron structure of the atoms that make them up. So that's why we're learning this. So guys, let's do one more and then we're going to turn you loose on your homework. Let's do copper. Copper is Cu and it is element number 29. So guys, find copper on your periodic table. Be careful. Don't say anything too rashly. But what sublevel is copper in? And it's not the 4D. It's the 3D because it's D minus 1. But guys, we need to build up to it. So do this with me. Where do the first two electrons always go? 1S. Write it down. Then electrons 3 and 4 go where? 2s. Write it down. Then electrons 5 through 10 go where? 2p. Write it down. I'm starting to get dizzy. Now, where do electrons 11 and 12 go? 3s. Write it down. Then where do electrons 13 through 18 go? 3p. Write it down. Now, where do electrons 19 and 20 go? 4s. Come over here and write it down. And then where do electrons 21 through 29 go? 3d. Now we need boxes. The 1s is a small sphere. Draw a box. The 2s is a small sphere. Draw a box. The 2p are dumbbell shaped. Draw three boxes. The 3s is a bigger sphere. Draw a box. The 3P are bigger dumbbells, draw three boxes. The 4S is an even bigger sphere, draw a box. How many boxes for the D? What if you forget? Well, guys, do this. You never have to memorize this, just count. There are two, four, six, eight, ten electrons in the D, but ten divided by two is five. So draw a big box and cut it into five spaces. All right, guys, now we need to place 29 electrons. Number one goes there. Where does number two go? Paired up. Number three goes there. Where does number four go? Paired up. Five goes there. Where does six go? Not paired up. Where does it go? Next box over, six and seven. And now eight, nine, and 10 have got to pair up. Eight, nine, and 10. And then 11, 12 goes paired up. Then 13, 14, 15. Notice how I did those unpaired. Then 16, 17, 18 paired up. What happens if you lose count? Now watch. Guys, we now filled up the 3P. The end of the 3P is number 18, so we know that we are now starting on 19 because the 3P is full. 
So this is 19, this is 20. Now guys, watch the D. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Now they pair up 26, 27, 28, and 29. That is the orbital filling diagram for copper. How can we check to be sure that we're right? Well, guys, join me over here. This is the end of the D sublevel. Where's copper? One away from the end. How many empty spots does copper have? One, so it's got to be right. So, guys, that's your challenge for today. Grab your homework. On the front is all the conceptual stuff. Filling in the diagram from your notes, answering these questions about the orbital filling patterns, and then the S&P sublevels. Then on the back, guys, you are going to do the orbital filling diagrams for these seven elements. And we will grade this on Wednesday. We will make this infinitely faster on Wednesday and then your test will be on Friday. So guys, don't forget the extra credit. It's due on Friday if you choose to do it. We have about seven or eight minutes left because it is early out. I would encourage you to get going on this homework. And by the way, guys, don't make this mistake. Don't try to do this homework Tuesday night. You are going to forget all of this. Do it tonight so when you're struggling, you can come and get help tomorrow. Because guys, I'm gonna tell you right now, I make this look really easy. It's not as easy as it looks.